Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you a few words about this week's Parsha, Parshat Truma. Uh, Truma begins a series of Parshiot which will deal with the instructions for building the Mishkan, the tabernacle which is portable, which the Jewish people will use to serve God in the wilderness, um, followed by a few Parshiot which um, explain how they actually built it. Uh, one of the highlights of the Parsha to my mind is the instructions about the menorah. The menorah has seven branches, as you can see from this diagram. It's unlike the Hanukkah menorah, which has nine branches, eight for the eight days of Hanukkah, plus the shamash in the middle. Um, you know, the, uh, the Torah explains uh, that uh, God told Moses how to build the menorah, but the Midrash tells us that um, the instructions were complicated enough um, that uh, the menorah is complicated enough that uh, Moses had a hard time understanding and God had to show him uh, how to build the menorah with a menorah of fire that he showed him um, at the top of uh, uh, Mount Sinai. Now this menorah that you're looking at right now is a diagram from a book called The Book of Hebrew Letters. Uh, it was done by Mark Podwall, an illustrator who has done some wonderful work. And I really love this menorah. I actually have it hanging um, in my office here. Now, uh, the menorah, uh, as it's described in the Torah, doesn't say, doesn't say in the Torah uh, what the symbolism is of the menorah itself, but it's uh, widely understood that because it's seven-branched, it is supposed to be a reminder of uh, the fact that God created the world. And Mark Podwell's menorah does that in a pretty explicit and I think beautiful way. As you see here um, on the right-hand side, you'll see uh, day one, the light and dark that's created. And then day two, God created um, uh, uh, what is above the firmament and below the firmament. Here you have God creating uh, the trees. And then on day four, the sun and the moon. Day five, go a little closer there, you see the birds and the fish. And over here, God created the land animals on day six um, and capping that off with uh, the creation of humanity. Uh, but really, uh, critically, right there in the center is a shin to remind us that on the seventh day, um, uh, God creates Shabbat. Without Shabbat, uh, uh, creation is incomplete. What I like so much about this is the symbolism of having Shabbat at the middle. Um, just as Shabbat is supposed to be a central point of a Jewish life. Um, it comes at the end of the week, but when you have Shabbat in your mind, it uh, changes the uh, pattern of the week. It, get, it tells us to get ready all throughout the week to get us ready and looking forward to Shabbat. And uh, when you put it at the center of your life, um, uh, you really look forward to Shabbat as a beautiful part of your week, a beautiful part of your relationship with your community and with your family. And um, by having Shabbat right there in the middle, it's just uh, one more reminder of that. I hope that uh, this Shabbat is one of uh, peace for you. As uh, um, uh, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel in his book, The Sabbath, uh, brings out, he, you know, he emphasizes the fact that um, what the tradition already says, which is that it's a bit strange to think that God created something on the seventh day. Um, after all, God was supposed to have six days of creation and rest on the seventh. But that aspect of menucha, of rest, is actually uh, a creation in and of itself. Um, it, it caps things off in a positive way by saying uh, menucha, rest, is not something which is uh, um, an absence, but actually it is a positive presence in our lives. And uh, having uh, that to look forward to on Shabbat is really a, a beautiful aspect of Jewish life. I hope you have a, uh, a wonderful Shabbat, one full of menucha, of rest, uh, and of joy.